Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. He is risen. risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Let us pray. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to thank Beth Kirscher, also known as Mrs. K, for preparing for our children a collection of their prayers and putting it in a video. It will be our Kids Connection for this week. Thank you, Mrs. K, and all of our Sunday school teachers and families. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters the, by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate, whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thieves come only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of our Lord. Today is the fourth Sunday in Easter, a Sunday that is also known as Good Shepherd Sunday, a Sunday when all of our scripture readings have to do with sheep. In Jesus' time, everyone knew about sheep and shepherds, but today it's a little different. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that for most of you, your sheep experience is limited to visits to a petting zoo or the many times you have heard a Bible story about sheep and shepherds. 
My own personal experience with sheep extends only a little beyond that. In my first call, there was a family that raised some sheep. And so every year on this Sunday, they would bring a lamb to church and the children would come up and pet that lamb. And that was the kids connection. I have one other experience with sheep, which wasn't even close up to the sheep. When I was in high school, my choir went on a trip to England and maybe it was because I was jet lagged and tired, but I was came fascinated with all the sheep that we drove by. You see, all these sheep on the countryside looked like they had been spray painted by someone and I just needed to know why. And so when I got to my home stay for one night, I asked the family, why are all the sheep spray painted? And it was explained to me that in that area, communal grazing areas were very common. And so each local farmer would mark their sheep with a different color or symbol, kind of like branding cattle, except that this would wash off when the sheep was ready to be shorn and the wool was ready to be sold. In our gospel lesson, Jesus talks about a communal sheepfold, a place where your sheep could be safe overnight. The sheep enter by the gate at night, and in the morning, the gatekeeper, who I assume had the night shift keeping the sheep safe, would open the gate and each sheep would follow its shepherd out into its green pastures. These sheep have a much more intimate relationship with their shepherds than the ones that I saw in England. These biblical flocks were likely smaller. And so instead of needing to say, well, all the ones with green racing stripes are mine, the shepherds could simply count on their own sheep, hearing their voice and following them. One thing that struck me this year as I was rereading this passage was how the word sheep is both singular and plural, as in one sheep, two sheep, red sheep, blue sheep. When Jesus spoke about being a good shepherd to his sheep, he was talking about us collectively as his flock, the church, and as individuals who are known, loved, and called by name. We are living in a time where our existence is profoundly collective and also profoundly individual. I don't know that there is a single person whose April 2020 went exactly the way they had expected it would. Our lives have been disrupted, but not in the same way, but all at the same time. We are in the same flock of folks adjusting to life during a global pandemic, but we are also individual sheep coming to grips with what it means for us in this time. A good shepherd would know that there are things like green pastures and fresh, clean water that all of his sheep need. But a good shepherd also knows that each sheep has its own special needs and quirks. Jesus, the good shepherd, knows that there are things like unconditional love and the forgiveness of sins that all of his sheep need. But Jesus, our good shepherd, also calls us each by name and knows our special needs and quirks. This past week, I have heard my shepherd's voice in a simple melody that keeps coming back to me in prayer and sustaining me in this time. I woke up this morning with it still in my head. I can't remember the last time that we sung it in worship, but I can remember the first time I heard it. When I was first at St. Mary's, our former music minister, Linda, and the celebration team were using it as a sung prayer response at our 1030 worship service. The words were simple but profound, and the melody quickly lodged itself deep in my soul. And this week it came back like an old friend. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my walls, beyond my fears, from death into life. In this time when there are so many things that I want, I want to know when it will be safe to leave our homes again. I want to know when KUSD is going to release their expectations for my kids for fourth quarter grading. I want to know when there will be a vaccine and a reliable cure. 
I want to know when I can replan my sabbatical. I want to know when I can go to Chicago and watch Frozen 2 for the first time with my nieces, like I promised I would do back in February when that seemed like an easy promise to keep. My kids and I have started a list of things we want to do when we can do things again. Most of the things on that list are about spending time with friends and family that we are not able to see in this time. There is no shortage of things to want. We've been in this shutdown mode for a long time and it may last for another month or more. This is hard stuff. I need the good shepherd to shepherd me beyond my wants. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. I think that most of us have had at least one moment in the past two months when our fears have threatened to overwhelm us. I know that I have. Fears about people we care about getting sick. Fears about the imp economic impact of the shutdown, fears about just how long we will have to live in isolation, fears that a cough or a sneeze could be the beginning of something much, much worse. There is no shortage of fear because this is a scary time. And I know that I need the Good Shepherd to shepherd me beyond my fears. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Perhaps this song will give words to your prayers and its melody will lodge in your soul as it did mine. But it might not, and that's okay. I am just one sheep in Jesus' flock and I share it with you as one sheep to another. May you hear the voice of your shepherd, giving you the words that you need in this time. Amen. This week, instead of a hymn of the day, I'm going to ask that you join me in reading the 23rd Psalm, and then that we will end by singing Shepherd Me, O God. I want to thank Owen Behrens for recording it on his various woodwinds, oboe, flute, and bassoon. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Your prayer response is, hear our prayer. Shepherding God, open our ears to hear your voice and to trust you are lovingly calling us each by name. Give us the courage, endurance, and patience we need to navigate life in uncertain times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guiding God, 
Give wisdom, compassion, and creativity to those who are working to help small businesses, families, and individuals who are struggling financially in this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforting God, you carry us tenderly. We pray for those who walk through dark valleys, overshadowed by anxiety and overwhelmed with suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, you desire justice for the hungry. Bless those who are keeping food pantries and feeding ministries open in this difficult but critical time. Be with the leaders, staff, volunteers, and recipients at the Shalom Center and the Grace Welcome Center. Lord, in your mercy, with bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is with heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, and may you hear the voice of the Good Shepherd leading you this week. Amen.